Are low impedance speakers hard to drive? This question comes from Anil in India. Hi Paul, I'm writing from Simla, India, now also called and pronounced Shimla. Oh, thank you. Uh, which uh, many will recall was the summer capital of India during the British Raj. I didn't know that. The summer heat of Delhi was beyond the tolerance level that the British could handle. <laughs> Them Brits. Uh, and so they would move the entire government for a few months up to the cool climates of Shimla, which is situated in the Himalayas around seven to 7,500 feet above sea level. Sounds close to almost our, our altitude. Anyway, here's my question. Uh, well, thank you for letting us know that piece of history. A power amplifier such as the Krell KSA 100S is rated to deliver 100 watts into an 8 ohm load. And the wattage doubles with every halving of the speaker load, 200 watts into 4 ohms, and so on. Right. From what I have read up, the amplifier should find it easier to drive a higher impedance rather than a lower impedance speaker. So this contradicts the power output specs of the Krell, higher wattage output for a lower impedance speaker. Confused and looking for clarity on this subject. I struggled with even bringing this up because sometimes some things are so obvious to me that I struggle to see why it isn't obvious to somebody else. So, yes, higher impedances are easier to drive than lower impedances. So, I kept thinking, why is he asking me this question? Because the Krell is it's easier to drive 100 watts than it is 200 watts, right? It's easier to go 10 miles an hour than it is to go 20 miles an hour because it's less strain on the engine. So I struggle, like, you know, and then it dawned on me that perhaps what people think is, is, is kind of turned around from, you know, from, from my, my head, which is, is fine. I mean, that's what, look, we all struggle to try and understand each other and to help each other understand what's going on. And that's why I love this question. I, I truly do, because it gives me another perspective of, of why people who aren't engineers are scratching their heads. So it seems like if I have, and here's my guess, I think Anil is looking at this saying, I've got this 200 watt amplifier, my Krell, and when it's driving those low impedance speakers, it's happy. But now all of a sudden I put a higher impedance speaker on it and all of a sudden it's, it's not able to produce as much of what it's capable of doing. That's all I can, th I don't know, Anil, if I'm getting it correct, but let's, correct or not, I th still think it's a good question and I know it plagues people how impedance and power and you know, wh what all that means. And I think I'll keep coming around to this and we'll keep trying to, to get at it, right? So impedance is a measure of difficulty to, 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 to drive or a, maybe a better way to put it is a, um, well, that, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's a bad, see, okay, here, here's where we get into trouble. A zero impedance, no impedance, the lowest impedance to man is zero impedance. That's a piece of wire, right? Let's say this is a piece of wire. If I measure across that, this, this wire has no impedance, right? Now, if I'm trying to make power go through this impedance, this zero impedance, there is nothing resisting the delivery of that power. That's great stuff. We like that. As I start adding resistance, if I make longer wire or I put a resistor in it, as I try and drive current through it, it's resisting the current going through it. So it's a resistor. Impedance is just a resistor that is specific to frequency. So whether we call it resistance or impedance, it's the same sort of thing, right? Zero ohms, easy to get through, no blockage whatsoever. As I add resistance, 
I can't pass it as easily through. So how, how does that, wh why isn't that good? Why, why shouldn't any speaker be zero ohms, okay? Well, here's why. In my example, I'm using this as a wire to pass current through. If I turn it like this, and now the wire is, the, the, the current is passing on our second wire. I don't have another, yeah, here we go. The wire is, I got zero ohms here, and it's passing on its way to the speaker. And all of a sudden, instead of just conducting that current, on its way. Now I'm going to take that current and I'm going to shunt it off. I'm going to change its direction from just straight across to something to the opposite end of the, let's call it a battery. So if we have a battery, right, um, if, if, if we are, are making this loop on here, then I'm going to shunt this off to the negative part of the battery. Now when I do that, if it's zero ohms, that's the same thing as taking a battery and shorting it. If you do that on a big enough battery, it'll explode. It's trying to deliver all its current instantaneously, and it just heats up and, and, and dies, right? That's because in, in one case, we're going in, in one direction, sort of a series direction, where we want the current to flow, like in a wire. But if we take that wire and we move it directly over to the negative terminal of the battery, or in the case of our speaker, you know, the plus and minus terminals, then all of a sudden we, we're, now we want some resistance, right? So we, we want something between directly shorting the plus to the minus, because that's a bad thing on an amplifier, it's a bad thing on a battery. So if I have an eight ohm speaker that I'm putting between the plus and the minus of the amplifier, could be the plus and the minus of a battery. I have eight ohms, so there's there's eight of these things that are keeping the 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 current from being directly shorted from plus to minus. And the higher, the more of those things, those impedance things, those ohms, the higher those go, the less current is flowing between the plus and the minus, and it's easier to drive. The lower the impedance when we're going between the plus and the minus the lower the impedance, um, the, the easier it is to short it out and the harder it is to del for that current to, uh, to go because it, it's going to cause heat and all this other stuff, right? I think I'm, I may be deviating off the thing, but I'm trying to give you an idea of what we want. So, yes, as it takes more power for a battery to deliver through a low impedance plus to minus than it does for a higher impedance. If, for example, you take a battery, we're just gonna use a battery as our amplifier, and you put a million ohms between it, that can sit there and trickle, you know, between plus and minus for a long, long time. Because there's a lot of resistance to moving that current from one to the other. As it gets smaller, it gets harder. So the fact that your Krell is capable of delivering 100 watts of power between the plus and the minus is great. The fact that it can double as you cut that in half is also great, but it's more strain on the amplifier. And the lower that impedance gets, the greater the strain on the amplifier, just as our example of the battery where we short it out and it just gets really hot and dies, right? Same with an amp. Of course, protection. Click on. I hope I haven't butchered that too badly. I, I'm trying to keep it simple. All the engineers watching can go, bah, bah, bah. that's okay. I'm okay with it. All right. I'm trying. I'll talk to you tomorrow.